Hello everyone, it's Olivia here, aka Hasty Reminded, and I'm going to make um, another video for the IGCSE Edexcel English Language paper. Um, I'm going to be looking at one of the poems called um, in the anthology called An Unknown Girl by Monzia Elvi. Um, I've had to take some pictures on my phone, otherwise my webcam does not play the game if I try to keep the poem up on the screen, which is quite annoying, but it's what we have to work with. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to talk a little bit through some of the things that I noticed when I read this poem. Um, just some things you might want to consider when you're exploring this poem. With English language, like anything in English, there's no definitive answer. So please don't take sort of my analysis and my thoughts as gospel. But this is just some of the things that jump out to me through my first reading of my poem and um, of this poem and as I've said before it's really important that when you read poetry you don't just read it once you read it a couple of times because the more you read poetry the more you notice the more things start to connect um, and until you actually get into that exam hall and you find out what the questions are you don't you don't know you can't really sort of pinpoint your answer if that makes sense so whatever whatever your analysis is or whatever your analysis you come up with it will have to link to the question in the exam so if some of this stuff I'm suggesting doesn't link to the question in your exam don't don't use it okay so I'm going to read out the poem first and then I'm just going to sort of talk through some of the things that I spotted so an unknown girl in the evening bazaar studded with neon an unknown girl is henna in, henna in my hand she squeezes a wet brown line from a nozzle. She is ice in my hand, which she steadies with her on her satin peach knee in the evening bazaar for a few rupees. An unknown girl is henna in my hand as a little air catches my sh shadow stitched kameez. A peacock spreads its line across my palm. Colours leave the street, float up in balloons. Dummies in shop fronts tilt and stare with their western perms. Banners from Miss India, 1993, for curtain cloth and sofa cloth canopy me. I have new, I have new brown veins. In the evening bazaar, very deftly, an unknown girl is henna in my hand. I am clinging to these firm peacock lines like people who cling to sides of tra sides of a train. Now the furious streets are hushed. I'll scrape off the dry brown lines before I sleep. Reveal soft as a snail trail the amber bird beneath. It will fade in a week. When India appears and reappears, I'll lean across the country with my hands outstretched, longing for the unknown girl in the neon bazaar. I love this poem so much. I think it's beautiful. But um, the kind of the main sort of message that I personally get from this poem is the fact that this is to do with a loss of culture. Um, the title itself is an unknown girl and even though the narrator in the poem is not the, un the unknown girl, the unknown girl is the girl who is Hennerin, <laughs> that's a really hard word for me to say, um, Hennerin, the narrator's hand, um, she is going through a loss of culture. And the main kind of technique that I've got through this poem, although reading it through, it's really interesting when you read poetry out loud because all the sort of sound techniques come out and I've noticed so much more with all the punctuation and everything. Um, but anyway, um, is juxtapositions and juxtapositions um, are when you have a contrast of some kind that often don't relate to each other. So on our very first sort of two lines although I don't know if this is set out because I found it on a website I don't know if this is how it's set out in the anthology so the lines might be different but on this one that I have here the first two lines um we have a juxtaposition we have the evening bazaar which traditionally you would picture in kind of you would kind of picture that as a lively bustling market and you kind of the word bazaar itself has connotations of like you know different cultures and like sort of the center of a community almost like selling their wares all that type of all that type of fit all the type of things going on in a bazaar but then we have this studded with neon 
and neon is a very sort of western it's kind of like a very sort of western piece of technology that has appeared it just it sounds out of place like when you go to even like here if you go to a market you wouldn't associate going to a market which is very rural a kind of rural experience you don't imagine or associate like oh yeah there's going to be like neon bars surrounding a market and then the juxtapositions sort of in this poem i believe they're creating a lot of conflict so we have that juxtaposition between the evening bazaar a rural kind of event studded with neon we have the um mention of the poster with um oh, sorry the banners the banners for miss india 1993 which is kind of like pageantry and once again traditionally you wouldn't really associate pageants with india although it is possible but sort of it just in the context of this poem it doesn't seem like banners for miss india 1993 and it's kind of like pageantry is a very sort of westernized especially sort of like american that's kind of very very sort of american idea and then there's dummies in shop fronts so like all the mannequins and fashion industry and it's just it just doesn't it just seems very out of place and we have it's kind of like creating this idea that these two worlds and the cultures are colliding and competing for space and the western side is unfortunately winning in this poem because it's just everywhere all the way throughout and even the narrator herself it's like she's aware of the culture she realizes what this unknown girl is doing she obviously understands about henna and like the importance of it and yet she's it's like her desperation to cling on to that and hold on to that and it's a very sort of active poem in comparison to being passive which is interesting because this is about or seems to be about like a loss of culture but yet this narrator isn't sort of just passively allowing that to happen it's a very active poem it's written in the present tense um and it's like with the line where she talks about um uh where is it where she talks about she's cling i'm clinging to these firm peacock lines like people who cling to the side to sides of a train and obviously in india you see that a lot with um the sort of um like their commute system with trains like people just <laughs> they're, they're incredible they just like leap onto the side of a train and like they're overcrowded and they're just clinging on onto the side of a train so that sort of really creates that image and really places this poem which is set in india at this indian bazaar and you can just sort of see that and but the way the narrator uses that as a simile it shows she herself is removed from that area she's not a part of india although potentially this narrator does have in indian heritage because she understands what the girl is doing she's not like a lost tourist who doesn't understand what's happening and there's another part of the poem that i thought is just it's so beautifully described but i think it's got quite quite dark and sinister connotations where she talks about as a little air catches my shadow stitch camise and that just instantly makes me think of like sweatshops like how a lot of clothes in the western world have been exported from sweatshops where people work in horrific conditions for like ridiculous amounts of pay and it's sickening to think that they still exist to this day so that I think that's a really powerful line and you could explore that a lot and it's kind of like almost this idea comes across that india even though this poem is set in india it's almost like it's being hidden and it's really chilling how a bazaar is meant to be like i said it's meant to be this lively wonderful place although this is to be fair this is occurring in the evening when people have probably gone home but it's how there's just a silence to it and where it took like where she she even mentions herself and it's like that end stop line after hushed so it's now the furious streets are hushed and it's just kind of like there's this silence and it's almost like they're forgotten about this country's just been completely it's just it just seems to be of no importance in this poem despite being set there and i thought it was really interesting how even the colours themselves are subdued because the wonderful thing about um 
India is like you often associate India being a very beautiful, vibrant place with all these like magnificent colours and like all the different sort of fashion that they have out there, like with saris and, you know, you think of it as being a very vibrant, vibrant, beautiful place. And yet in this poem, even the colours have been subdued and she doesn't even, the narrator doesn't even mention specific colours that much. She talks about colours leave the street, float up in balloons. And, and that's a very odd thing as well, thinking about balloons randomly being it just doesn't it's just all these images just don't seem quite to fit with the setting and there was a part and the part where she mentions like on her like the um the unknown girl she's obviously wearing um on like maybe some kind of dress but it mentions on her satin peach knee and peach is a very sort of pale pretty but a very sort of pale colour and it's kind of linked in with the idea that everything is fading because she even mentions that the um the henna on her hand once she scrapes it off it will like fade in a week and the amber but i think the amber bird beneath is a beautiful image but it's like how this fiery sort of bird almost almost like a phoenix this fiery kind of something that she's proud of she's proud to belong to this culture but the fact that it will fade in a week for her this is a temporary state she doesn't truly belong in India anymore and she talks about how when India appears and reappears I'll lean across the country with my hands outstretched longing for the unknown girl and the neon bazaar so it's almost like the narrator of this poem is aware that she is losing kind of like her heritage and her home and her culture and even if she doesn't live there anymore she still cares about that and it's um there is a lot of sort of fading what I would sort of considered to be like imagery to do with the idea of fading away so like where it talks about reveal soft as a snail trail snail trails are very beautiful once again very beautiful like a silvery kind of that silvery sort of slime that they excrete but it's also this idea that they fade really quickly because they're so they're so thin you don't you can barely see them and a lot of there's just a, and like I've mentioned before, there's a lot of action with the poem, like a lot of a lot of verbs with the with the um I'll scrape off, I'll lean. Uh, what other ones are there? There's so many different. Deftly, although that's that's an adverb, so deftly. That's how quick the unknown girl is to because it's just she probably does this all the time and it's just second nature to her and she's creating this henna pattern and she just does it so deftly and that's quite sad as well this kind of there's a lack of communication in this poem it's kind of like this unknown girl hasn't even said anything to her there's no connection there she's just to the unknown girl she probably just views this other woman as just another tourist passing through and she's just you know very deftly sort of putting this henna on her hand but there's just like a real lack of communication so that's another juxtaposition actually there's like there's quite a lot there's a lot of action but yet there's not a lot of communication so there's no dialogue but there's a lot of um action that's happening in this poem it's just i just it's just very powerful and there's just so there's so much you can go into there's so much you can talk about and just keep glancing over my notes in case there's anything um yeah and just kind of like that idea again that you really sort of gain a sense that the speaker is in a similar position that she's losing her culture but for her it's kind of a temporary thing whereas this unknown girl who we meet she's probably still going to be stuck in this bazaar trying to make some kind of living any way she can for a few rupees and it's like it's just it just sounds like exploitation, although it's, um, and actually, yeah, I guess in a way it is quite ironic. So you have all these kind of Western, Western businesses and Western influences coming into India. And yet for this unknown girl, her life hasn't changed. Her life hasn't improved. It's like studded with neon. So it's almost like this idea that all these people who are trying to fight for a living, the, these western businesses are just coming over and they're just taking over 
so once again that's returning to the idea of like it really seems that in this poem both of the worlds and both of the cultures are really competing for space god i love imperialism it's oh it's awful but i think this is a really powerful poem it's a very subtle but very sort of powerful poem and i hope i hope this helps and if anyone has any questions or you have any ideas that you want to share like what, what you interpret the poem to be it'd be great to go through and i guess the last thing i'll say this video is really long i do apologize um this is a thing of poetry you start and then you just keep you keep getting tons and tons of ideas jumping out i really like how they describe the um decorating of the henna like she is ice in my hand because that makes me think of like baking a cake and once again those two images kind of seem juxtaposed it's like she is ice in my hand form a nozzle and it's just kind of that makes me think of like piping a cake so once again it's kind of like the sort of more traditional western images you would associate with the western world are kind of they're just completely sprawled throughout this poem and whenever you do get a more traditional or what you would traditionally associate with india um like a peacock spreads its lines across my palm so how she's connecting the henna to like peacocks that you would naturally find in india it's really sad because they they just it just all fades away it's just completely been taken over by the western imagery especially where she mentions the amber bird beneath it will fade in a week so anyway i hope this has helped in some way and if you have any questions um feel free to comment below or i will also leave my um tutor email in the description below thank you Bye.